So I wonder if any of you are into quiz shows. One of our daughters has recently got into watching quiz shows and it's not really been my thing because I'm not very keen on being asked difficult questions that show up my ignorance. And if you were here last week on Zoom, you'll have heard Liz preach on a difficult question that people came to Jesus with all about tax. And we're carrying on with the same theme this week of difficult questions that Jesus was asked. So here's the question that was brought to him and it was really designed to be a trick question. And it was teacher, which is the greatest commandment in the law? And although the motives behind this question weren't great, it's good news for us that the question was asked because we get such a clear, wonderful answer from Jesus. He says, love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment. And the second is like it. Love your neighbor as yourself. It's very simple, isn't it? But it's also quite hard to get our heads around what it actually means. And Jesus is quoting here from the Old Testament and words about loving God. These words are called the Shema. Not quite sure if that's the right pronunciation, but um, these are words that faithful Jews would have said morning and evening as they prayed. They would even carry these words around with them and they're still said today. Here's a picture of some people praying these words. And so I thought these words are very important to us as Christians. And so it may be that you would like to write them out and put them somewhere that you see often. If you're on our email list, you'll have received a poster, a hand washing poster, print, which you can print out, which encourages you to say these words as you wash your hands for 20 seconds during the pandemic. These are words that need to be written on our hearts. So love the Lord your God. Jesus tells us that the most important thing is to love God wholeheartedly. But what would he have meant by these words? What did they mean in Jewish culture? The words heart, soul and mind back at that time. I had to do some reading and my brief words aren't going to capture all that they meant, but hopefully we'll capture the gist of them. Jesus wants me to love him with all my heart. The Bible doesn't mean a physical beating heart. Jesus was talking about our deepest desires. The desires of our hearts are what makes us tick. We have choices about who we love and how we love. And the choices we make come out of our hearts. Loving God with our whole heart is about agreeing with God from the depths of our being. It's about getting to know God and more and more finding ourselves wanting what God wants. So if the desires of our hearts are what makes us tick, I wonder what makes you tick? What drives your decisions? What drives my decisions? And you may be wondering why there's a picture of a dog here looking at his tail. Well, there's a phrase, the tail wagging the dog. And the phrase is used when something less important is becoming too important and actually controls the whole thing. And as I prepared for this talk and reflected on my own life, I found this image of the dog helpful. I've been asking myself, is it love for God that drives the choices that I make? Or is it something less important that's influencing me? I wonder what the dog's tail might be for you. So we've had our heart, our deepest desires, and next loving God with our soul. And our soul isn't some separate thing on its own. God breathes life into us and loving God with my soul is about loving him with my whole unique personality. It'll look different for each of us. This is about everything that makes me myself and everything that makes you the individual person that you are. Loving God with the whole of yourself. What about our mind? This is maybe slightly easier. Our mind is where we weigh things up and we come to conclusions 
about what it means to love God and our neighbour. It's all about our thoughts and our decisions. This is where we grow in our understanding of God's thoughts. So loving God with our heart, our soul and our mind. It sounds very wholehearted, doesn't it? But it's also quite abstract. What I want to know is what could I choose to do differently next week as I take Jesus' word to heart about loving God and my neighbour? Because love doesn't happen in a vacuum. It's what happens in the nitty gritty of real relationships. So to start with, could you just take a moment to think about a relationship that you've had that's been loving? It might be the love of a parent or another relative. It could be a friend, it could be a lover. How did that love get expressed? It could have been, cho it could have been shown through choosing to spend time together, wanting to put the other person first, doing things that would bring them joy wanting to get a glimpse of the world through their eyes. There are, of course, also relationships which may have been damaging, relationships which have made it hard for us to imagine what it might look like to love well. God is love. That love has always flowed between the Father, the Son and the Spirit. But this love of God is too wonderful for us to get our heads around. It's too big. But we can grasp a way to love God and love our neighbour as we look at the life of Jesus. So loving relationships, let's start with loving God. And the Bible said God is love and we can only love because he first loved us. We can see as we look at Jesus how close his relationship was with God the Father. He would choose to sometimes withdraw from the people around him just so he could spend time alone with God the Father. So I wonder, do we take time out just to simply focus on God, to love God and to re receive his love for us, to find out what he wants for us? So that's first, loving relationship with God. And secondly, loving our neighbour, in other words, our relationship with other people. Because love is more than expressing our feelings for God, we're making a choice to partner with the risen Christ as we go and love our neighbour. Now I'm going to have to preach to myself today because Dave reminded me last night that I recently exploded that this verse about loving your neighbour was impossible. A few months ago, we were delighted when a young family moved in next door. Sadly, the pandemic has meant we haven't really been able to get to know them or welcome them as we'd have wanted to. But I have to admit that as time has gone by and building work on their house has regularly woken us up early in the morning and disrupted all my all important micro rest during the day, my patience has absolutely run out. I'm genuinely struggling to find any love in my heart. What about the neighbours on the other side of our house? Well, it's a joy to live next door to St Mary's School. The sound of the children playing really makes me smile, especially after it's been so quiet during earlier lockdown. But again, I find my love is in short supply when I'm woken early by the noise of the leaf blower. And don't get me started on the noise on the roundabout outside our house where people rev their engines in the middle of the night. All in all, whilst I like to think of myself as a loving person, the reality can often be very different. So enough about me and my poor track record on loving my neighbour. Let's look again at Jesus, who has shown us so clearly what it means to love our neighbour. He even told the story of the Good Samaritan to make sure that we were clear that our neighbour isn't only those who are living nearby. It could be anyone who's in need of God's love and care. Loving like Jesus will definitely involve spending time with people we would rather avoid. It's going to take us out of our comfort zone. So let's get practical. 
what about that person who I find really difficult, who God wants me to love? There is someone who would really wind me up. And many years ago, I started praying regularly for him. He had no idea I was doing this. But I asked God to help me to see this person as God sees them and to give me his love for them. Because I really couldn't generate that love out of myself. And it didn't happen overnight, but over time, my relationship with them has been transformed. I wonder what it might mean for you to love your neighbour during lockdown. For most of us, part of loving other people will mean wearing a face mask to protect them, washing our hands regularly, keeping a safe distance. It may mean this week, making sure that you phone somebody who's isolated or offer to help with their shopping. The list is endless, but let's try and listen out for God prompting us to do something for somebody this week. So loving relationships with God, loving relationships with other people, and finally loving ourselves. This is where Jesus' words are so profound. Love your neighbour as you love yourself. How can we love others if we don't know how to love ourselves? And for many people, this is the hardest part of Jesus' teaching. If this is your struggle, then I encourage you to follow the example of Jesus, who took lots of time to be in the presence of God the Father. Listen to God as he tells you how much he loves you, as he tells you that you're a precious child of God. It's when we know deep inside how loved we are by God that we can ask God to transform how we see other people who we might have othered. Help us to see them as God sees them, to realise that they too are beloved children of God. Just bringing up those points again on the screen. So... As we go into this coming week, let's reflect on what drives us and try to identify what desires are behind the things we do. Think about that image of the dog and whether the tail is wagging the dog. Is it love of God that drives you forward? And then let's choose to wholeheartedly love God in the coming week with all our heart, our deepest desires, with all our soul, our unique personality with all our mind, our thoughts and our decisions, and to love our neighbour as ourselves.